وَمَا كَانَ رَبُّكَ And your Lord is not لِيُهْلِكَ الْقُرَى That He would destroy the towns. He would destroy the cities. The people of the cities. بِظُلْمٍ With injustice. وَأَهْلُهَا While its people مُسْلِحُونَ Are ones who do islah. Allah would not destroy a city بِظُلْمٍ With injustice. Meaning with injustice on his part. That if he were to destroy that nation, it would be injustice on his part while its people are doing islah. This is an explanation of the previous ayah. That when people are doing islah, when people are doing reform, then Allah will not punish a people. Then Allah will not punish them. And when people do not do islah, when they do fasad, and that's what they promote, then the punishment of Allah descends upon them. Do you understand? وَمَا كَانَ رَبُّكَ لِيُهْلِكَ الْقُرَى بِظُلْمٍ With injustice, on whose part? On his part. That while the people are doing islah, he would not destroy them. Because if he would destroy them, it would be considered as injustice. Secondly, بِظُلْمٍ has been understood as because of the zulm that the people are committing. That if in a nation there are people who are committing zulm, and at the same time there are people who are doing islah, then what's going to happen? Those people are not going to be destroyed. But if everyone is doing zulm, no one is doing islah, then what happens? The punishment of Allah descends upon them. So again, what lesson is there in this ayah for us? What lesson is there? That we have to do islah. Because if we don't, then we could be in problem. Then the punishment of Allah can descend. And also if you think of it, in all of the incidents that we learned in the surah, we learned about the various crimes that the people were committing. Isn't it? And one of you also gave a comment that the people were punished for the crimes that they were committing. And if you look at it today, all of those crimes are widespread today. They're widespread. They're so common. Rampant everywhere. The crime that was limited to one nation or the only crime that they were busy in, today you see all those crimes present. So what does this show to us? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us what we should do in order to avert the punishment from us. And what is that? That we have to do islah. And if we don't do islah, we go sit in our homes, say that I have nothing to do with those people. It's their life to each their own. Allah will punish them. Allah will take care of them. Then we could be held responsible as well. It is our duty that we must stop the wrong. We must stop it. Because if we don't, then we will be held accountable as well. Also this ayah has been understood in another way. That وَمَا كَانَ رَبُّكَ لِيُهْلِكَ الْقُرَى That your Lord would not destroy towns بِظُلْمٍ with injustice وَأَهْلُهَا مُصْلِحُونَ While its people are doing islah. Meaning, if the people are doing islah, if the people are doing islah, Allah will not destroy them. Even if they are doing kufr at the same time. Which is why one of the scholars, he said that Allah allows a people to live with kufr, with disbelief. But He does not allow a people to live with zulm, with injustice. So if a people are doing zulm, Allah will destroy them. But if a people are doing kufr, but they are not doing zulm, they are just to one another. They are just to one another. They are fair to one another then Allah will not destroy them. وَلَوْ شَاءَ رَبُّكَ And if your Lord wished, لَجَعَلَ النَّاسَ أُمَّةً واحدة. He would have made the people into one nation. One nation. Everyone would be believers. Everyone would be on the same religion. But what does Allah say? وَلَا يَزَالُونَ But they will never cease مُخْتَلِفِينَ as ones to differ. Meaning, they will continue to differ. يَزَالُونَ is from the root letters. Zai, wow, lam, zawal. And what does zawal mean? Downfall. Similarly, he said that it's from the root letters, zai, ya, lam. Zayl, which is to 
cease to abandon. So la yazaluna, it will never cease. They will never cease. They will never stop. They will always be muhtalifin ones who differ. People will continue to differ in religion, in creed, in belief, in opinions, in sects. Constantly people will differ from one another. So this concept of having only one religion, everybody being on one religion, this is unrealistic. It's impossible. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that if He wanted, He could have made people on one religion. However, the people will always continue to differ with one another. إِلَّا except مَنْ رَحِمَ رَبُّكْ Whom your Lord has given mercy to. Meaning except for the person whom Allah has been merciful towards. That person will not differ. What does it mean by this that he will not differ? Meaning he will not separate himself from the truth. He will not leave the religion. Do you understand? Because if you look at it, at the time of Nuh a.s. before, everyone was on Tawheed. Wasn't it? Soon what happened? People began to differ. Some people were on Tawheed, others were on Shik. Eventually what happened? Those on Shik, they were destroyed. Then after the flood, who survived? It was only the believers. But again we see that soon people began doing shirk again. لا يزالون مختلفين This ikhtilaf will continue to happen. And then again those people were destroyed. Who survived? Only the believers. But very soon again, what happened? People began doing shirk again. And this continued one after the other. Until we see today that people have now developed into so many different groups, so many different religions, so many different sects, and this will continue until the end of time. Who will remain on the truth? Who will not differ from it? Who will not deviate away from it? The one whom Allah is merciful to. He will remain firm on the right path. إِلَّا مَنْ رَحِمَ رَبُّكْ Except for the one whom your Lord is merciful to, He will remain steadfast on the truth. وَلِذَلِكَ خَلَقَهُمْ And for that purpose He created them. What does it mean by that, for that purpose? ذَلِكَ refers to اختلاف. It has been understood in various ways, but for your ease, I'm summarizing these points. ذَلِكَ is understood as اختلاف. That for this difference, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created the people. What difference? That people are being tested right now. Who stays firm on the truth and who leaves it? And based on that, who becomes Sa'id and who becomes Shaqi? If people were forced to be on the right religion, people were not given any choice, everyone was forced to become Ummatan Wahida, then there would be no purpose for the creation of human beings. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the human beings. Why? لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا Who does good deeds? So those who do good, they will be separated from those who do bad. Those who do good will become Sa'id, and those who do bad will become Shaqi. So if our goal is to finish all of the differences that exist on the earth, first of all, it is impossible. It's unrealistic. And secondly, it goes against the creation plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلِذَلِكَ خَلَقَهُمْ Allah created them for this purpose. So that He can distinguish the obedient from the disobedient. وَتَمَّتْ كَلِمَةُ رَبِّكَ And the statement of your Lord was completed. Which statement was fulfilled? لَأَمْلَأَنَّ That surely I will definitely fill جَهَنَّمَ hellfire مِنَ الْجِنَّةِ From the jinn, one nasi and the people أَجْمَعِينَ altogether. What does it mean by this? Kalima, statement over here refers to لَأَمْلَأَنَّ جَهَنَّمَ مِنَ الْجِنَّةِ وَالنَّاسِ أَجْمَعِينَ That this statement of Allah will be fulfilled. And remember, أَجْمَعِينَ over here does not mean every single human being, every single jinn. What does it mean? Every shaqi jinn and every shaqi human being. Those who deserve to go to hellfire. That hellfire will be filled up with them. In other words, the reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the human beings is so that they are tested. 
who does what and based on that they will get their end they will get their result those who are shaqi they will end up in the hellfire and those who are sa'id they will end up in jannah so with this difference that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has allowed this difference that allah has allowed tammat kalimatu rabbika la amla anna jahannama min al-jinnati wan nasi ajma'in with this difference this is going to be accomplished now this does not mean that allah really wants people to go to hellfire what does it mean that allah has allowed this difference so that the good can be distinguished from the evil wa kullan and each naqussu alayka we relate to you min anba'i ar-rusul from the news of the messengers meaning wa kullan all that have been mentioned over here we are relating upon you and these incidents that we're relating upon you these are of the anba news anba is a plural of naba and news of who ar-rusul the messengers so all who were mentioned in the surah were who messengers of allah from nuh alayhi salam to shu'ayb alayhi salam they were all rusul messengers and why are we relating these incidents to you ma nusabbitu bihi fu'adak that by which we make firm your heart through it we make your heart firm ma refers to that meaning those incidents nusabbitu we make firm from the root letters sabata sabat what does sabat mean to become firm so nusabbitu we give stability we stabilize we make firm fuadaka your heart meaning we make your heart firm by mentioning these stories to you we give you confidence we give you endurance we give you istiqama persistence how by mentioning these incidents to you so what does it mean by sabat what does it mean by the stability istiqama steadfastness on da'wa on giving the message so the reason why these incidents have been mentioned is to give comfort and confidence to the heart of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and after him every da'i every person who is calling people to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because in these stories constantly what has been seen how with so much force with so much confidence the messengers they delivered the message look at how shu'aib alayhi salam delivered the message and also when you see that you're not the only one who is going through a certain problem what happens you feel better you feel as if you're not alone You feel as if other people could go through it you can also go through it if they were successful you can also be successful so the reason is mentioned over here as to why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has related the incidents of the previous messengers and what is that reason ma nusabbitu bihi fu'adak so that we can give comfort and confidence and stability to your heart waja'aka and it has come to you fi hadhihi in this what does this refer to the surah or these incidents there has come to you in this al-haq the truth wa maw'idha and also an admonition wa dhikra and a reminder for who lil mu'minin for the believers so we see that in these incidents is a lesson for who for the da'i for the one who is calling people to allah that he should not give up that ultimately success is for him that he should be patient he should be persistent he should be confident and at the same time there is a lesson in this also for who for the believers for the followers for those who have accepted the call of the dari that it is again they who will be successful wa qul and you say lil ladina to those people who la yu'minuna those people who don't believe say to them that i'malu ala makanatikum keep working on your position keep doing what you're doing work according to your position inna amilun indeed we are also working you do what you have to do and we will do what we have to do if you're allowed to practice your religion we should be allowed to practice our religion if you want to take the position of opposing us 
we want to take the position of remaining firm, of spreading the message. وَانْتَظِرُوا And say to them that keep waiting. إِنَّا مُنْتَظِرُونَ Indeed, we are also waiting. Wait for what? Wait to see what happens. Wait to see that who is going to be successful and who is going to be defeated. Let's see. Keep waiting. وَانْتَظِرُوا إِنَّا مُنْتَظِرُونَ this is similar to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's statement that فَسَوْفَ تَعْلَمُونَ مَنْ تَكُونُ لَهُ عَاقِبَةُ الدَّارِ إِنَّهُ لَا يُفْلِحُ الظَّالِمُونَ And you will come to know for which of us will be the happy end in the hereafter. And certainly the wrongdoers will not be successful. So keep waiting to see the results. وَلِلَّهِ غَيْبُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ And to Allah belong the unseen of the heavens and the earth. Meaning, whatever that is hidden in the heavens and the earth from the servants, who is aware of it? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is fully aware of it. وَإِلَيْهِ And only to Him. يُرْجِعُ الْأَمْرُ كُلُّهُ All matters are going to be returned to Him. For what? For decision. So He will give recompense to each that He deserves. فَعْبُدْهُ Therefore worship only Him. Why? Because all matters are ultimately going to return to him. وَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَيْهِ And also trust upon him. Trust upon him for what? For what? Rely upon him for what? Hmm? In order to accomplish your mission. In order to do your work. Because in this surah, constantly there is emphasis on what? Delivering the message. Holding on to the religion. Not giving up. وَاسْتَقِمْ وَلَا تَطْغَوْ وَلَا تَرْكَنُوا So وَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَيْهِ Trust upon Him. وَمَا رَبُّكَ And your Lord is not بِغَافِلٍ at all unaware عَمَّا تَعْمَلُونَ about what you all do. Allah is not unaware of what all of you do. Who does you all refer to? Believers and disbelievers. Those who responded to the call of the Messenger and those who did not. Allah is fully aware of what each and every single person is doing. What you are busy in. What efforts you are putting. What you are trying to accomplish. And he is fully aware and he will recompense you. We will listen to the recitation then we will do the summary of the surah. Of obeying him. And the other ways of disobedience. And the entire surah revolves around the theme that we learnt in ayah number 24. That مَثَلُ الْفَرِيقَيْنِ كَالْأَعْمَى وَالْأَصَمِّ وَالْبَصِيرِ وَالْسَمِيرِ هَلْ يَسْتَوِيَانِ مَثَلًا أَفَلَا تَذَكَّرُونَ That there are two groups of people. فَرِيقَيْن One group is of those who are أَعْمَى and أَصَمْ Blind and deaf. And the other group is of those who are بَصِيرِ and سَمِيرِ Seeing and hearing. They are not the same. They are not the same in what they do, in what they accomplish, in their end result. They are not the same. Those people who are seeing, who are aware of the commands of Allah, those people who know, those people who follow, they are not the same as those people who turn a blind eye to it. They are completely different. And we learned at the beginning of the surah as well, that a comparison was made between people who are grateful and people who are ungrateful. People who are dunya oriented and people who are akhira oriented. That wala in adakuna al insana minna rahmatan summa nazarnaha minhu, he becomes laya usun kafur. And if he's given blessings, he becomes la farihun fakhur. Except for who? Alladina sabaru wa amilu salihat. Subhanakallahumu bihamdika, nashadu wala ilaha illa anta. نستغفرك ونتوب إليك السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته